Hello friend, this is Rupesh and you are watching CVNet video series on object pool and this is a second video on pool. So yesterday we had a thread pool video and thank you for responding so well for that. So today we'll learn object pool. So it is little different than thread pool. In object pool, you have different objects and unlike thread pool where you was actually pushing the job to the pool and it was actually queuing the job and it was executing your job using different threads but in object pool you will ask the object from the pool and use it and reverse it back so this is the whole funda here so let's quickly see that if this is your object pool here you will have different objects in this pool okay you created them o1 o2 o6 like this now in your real program where you actually need them whenever you want you can ask them and they will be made available to you now once you are done using these objects you will have to return it back so this process let's say we will call it acquiring the object and this process returning back to the pool will say releasing the object so we have i have just written this okay uh, i will quickly take you to this main function so we created pool and then we say okay how many objects we want to create and you can have this interactively here i am treating that it's kind of a hard coded in the pool itself like what object it is going to construct and what object it is going to contain but it's up to you you can actually give the object also from here like okay i want these objects to be preserved in the pool and then i'll reuse them so you can have that flavor if you want but this is just to give you a fair idea so these three calls will actually remove these objects object one object two object three from the pool and the moment you are asking for fourth object which is not available in the pool see we are asking again so by this third call because we have only three objects in the pool now pool is empty if you will again ask it will have to reconstruct it but when you are releasing these objects see now we are releasing object 1 object 2 and object 3 so we are sending these object back to the pool but the moment you will try to release fourth object what you got here it won't work because limit is already set so it's very simple let's look at the implementation of acquiring first so okay wait before going there we'll have this constructor we'll see object pool is constructed we have set the max size this is important and we'll push that many object this is the object construction and we are putting this object type so that's why i have kept it generic you can imagine like whatever object you want to push here you can create the class of that we'll see what sort of objects you should push here okay so don't worry don't just run after this we'll see what is the actual application of this so pool is ready now you start acquiring in first case when you started acquiring the for the first time you will come and check pool is empty no all the three objects are available it will send the object three times and then when you will ask for fourth time it will tell pool is empty creating new object and let's quickly see the release object api also release object you will send the object from there and yeah i am using this shared object i have already explained what this does in my channel so go ahead and watch that video it is very easy to search this video just write search i mean shared pointer cpp nuts you'll get it so when you're releasing you will first check whether i should push this object into pool or not if your size of the pool is already maxing out then you won't push it otherwise you will push back to the pool that's it it's very simple i'll quickly run this see for three times it send you the objects and for the fourth time pool is empty creating a new object i mean when you are actually asking for the object for the fourth time and if you will try to push it back let's see what this would do i'll quickly compile this and run this see it is telling pool is full cannot add more objects so now let's quickly talk about like in what scenarios you will use object pool i mean it is very easy right uh why would you pull something and pick the content from the pool use it and push it back and then whenever you need it 
again pull the object from the pool and then use it or modify it i mean doesn't matter and then push it back why the point is the construction of this object what you are keeping in the pool like these three objects are actually very heavy for the example you can say that if you are maintaining an object of database connection so this is quite a heavy object because it takes time it will have handshaking to the database server and then so many authentications will have to take place then only it will have a secure connection then let's say you did some communication and then you will terminate this object then next time let's say maybe half a second or two second passed and you again want to send some data then you will have to re-establish the whole thing again and again then why would you do that? You just simply have to retain that object. Okay, the connection is already established. I will just simply keep it with me and I'll reuse it whenever I want. And when the application is going down, that time you will destroy the whole pool. And then in that case, all the objects will go down. So this is the basic use of object pool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye. Take care.